Welcome back to another episode of the uh, uh, Judaism and Eco- uh, Ecology series. We're very happy to be with Michael Kalati again, my, my cousin. And um, one thing before we start I want to mention, and that is uh, we actually dedicated the entire series uh, in memory of Elisheva Yael Bat uh, Levi Velea which we did actually mention when we did the first original recording, but uh, unfortunately that, that got missed out of the recording. So I just want to reiterate for the record, uh, this entire series is dedicated in her memory. Um, she was an extremely uh, special and, and precious person, and um, we miss her very much, especially at these times when we're talking about subjects uh, in Torah that were very dear to her heart she was very much a person who was in consonance with uh, everything to do with Torah and mitzvot uh, man to man man to God and uh, Hashem should give her a very lofty place in Shemaim even loftier than she has now um, and with that let's let's uh, hand over the microphone to Michael who is going to be discussing man's attitude towards the environment. Michael, how are you doing? Yes, uh, pretty good. Thank you, Rabbi Mashiach. Um, in this episode, I'd like to talk about um, kind of man-to-man, uh, the, the sort of the, uh, the, the uh, original um, um, concepts of, of ownership over the planet and over land mm. um, how we, we we can start off with um, understanding that man's ownership is not absolute you know man's control over the world is restricted as we see in Vayikra as I mentioned earlier in earlier episodes in Vayikra chapter 25 verse 23 Hashem says for the earth is mine only Hashem may be considered to enjoy absolute ownership of his creation Man is commanded not to spoil the creation, but rather to improve and perfect it. That's our job, it's a tikkun olam. Man rights in property are restricted. He may not use his possessions in ways that are likely to harm others. Principles um, are set forth for protecting the public domain, be it those areas owned by the public or areas such as the ozone layer Uh that protect us from the harmful rays of the sun that belong to no one but serve all um, it also says in Vayikra chapter 19 verse 18 love thy neighbor as thyself yeah, this is the basis for all Jewish ethics it's, it's applied to protection of the environment as well in the obligation to exercise care not to harm others and particularly in the obligation to avoid doing, doing harm to the community uh, in, in correct relationships between man and his fellow man and between man and his environment the legal and ethical boundaries between mine and not mine become blurred so uh, you know we our, our Rabbonim, our sages um, were not satisfied with merely emphasizing environmental values but also established concrete legal obligations Jewish legal sources contain extensive discussion of the environmental issues that concern modern society and point the way to protection against smoke, odours, pollution of air and water and damage to the natural landscape. You know, we find a lot of uh, of categories in the Mishnah Torah uh, 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 that I'd like to talk about shortly. Mm. Um, Basically, we find that um, certain types of nuisances like smoke, foul odours, noise were classified as extreme and those responsible for them were not permitted to claim as what's termed unchallenged practice in their defence. In such instances the injured party's failure to protest does not establish the perpetrator's right to continue his offensive practice since the damage in these cases is to the injured party himself not to his property and causes him to suffer the law presumes that he will never waive his rights to restrain the perpetrator um, a similar 
principle operates for aesthetic values of the city where residents do not have the power to waive enforcement of ordinances protecting aesthetic standards. We find this uh, Rambam in uh, his magnificent Mishnah Torah in Book 12 in the Sefer Kinyan, the Book of Property Acquisition. He, in chapters 9, uh, 10 and 12, he, he basically gives us a very good uh, environmental uh, structure, uh, although um, you know they can be. There are there are certain examples that are given. For example, distances to boundaries. Um, um, the the possible damage that may occur by, for example, um, a well near your neighbour's wall. There has to be a minimum distance of three tefach plus a barrier. This is to guard against water seepage. Uh, you have um, assault, uh, assault uh, storage near a wall, a neighbor's wall. Um, these are all in, sorry, in Hilchot Shrenim, which is the uh, laws dealing with neighbors. This can easily be converted to environmental issues and environmental uh, statutes that we can, we can perhaps um, determine laws by. Uh, so the salt that was built up near a wall should also have a three tefach distance um, to provide against heat generation. Um, you have um, plants that are um, against the wall also must have a distance of three tefach against away from the wall because this will eventually weaken the wall. You have a mill. Um, if you have a mill uh, neighboring someone else's property, there must also be a three tefach distance now this is also this is against tremors to wall so vibration even vibration rambam took into account and also the noise that eventually enough vibration would eventually cause cracks and bad damage it was so having a um, a tanor an oven uh, against a neighbor's wall will also heat the wall and will eventually most likely cause damage um in also in uh, Perek 10 of Ilkhat Shechenim, he also talks, this is more obvious as an environmental um, law, it talks about the distances that, uh, for example, threshing floors should be from cities. He, 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 he prescribes that 50 amma distance from the city uh, to avoid wind carrying the straw. Um, for aesthetic purposes, trees surrounding a city should have a, be a distance of 25 amot. Um, carob and wild fig trees should be 50 amos. Um, this this is for aesthetic reasons only, and particularly these particular trees because they have many branches. Um, to avoid wind carrying the straw uh, from threshing floors, uh, they are they are deemed to be uh, 50 amas away from the city and the graves from the city should be 50 amas mm. uh, this the, the possible downside with difficulty for kohanim um, they it can't be tommy mace exactly yeah and the leather works the tanneries um, should also uh, be sited to the east of the city due to the wind being warm and reducing damage and of odor, and also the, the the winds should be in the in the logical place to avoid blowing towards the city. Mm. Uh, this should be fifty amas away. Um, um, also, basically, um, there is also in Peric eleven. We talk about he talks about the principles of damage. It says um, direct damage. For example, a person cannot stand in his property and shoot arrows across to his neighbor's um, property and claim that he can do as he wishes in his own property. Therefore, a person is duty bound to, duty bound to maintain a fair distance so as not to be shooting arrows at his neighbor. Uh, in other words, causing damage in the following uh, cases with, uh, you know, w uh, ashan with smoke. Mm. 
mm. with the reach beta kisse, with a toilet smell, like a, a polluted, a, a, a bad smell, mm. avak, which is dust or different types of dust, and nidnut hakarka, which is shaking of the ground. Like all of these are environmental issues that can be translated from these simple situations to perhaps global situations. Um, so yeah, so so there's um, um, confer- um, concerning the first three: smoke, toilet smell, and dust. If he didn't maintain his distance, and damage was done, since it is the wind which helped carry the smoke or other items of damage, the owner would not be liable. Also, indirect damage when bees are placed next to a mustard patch. It is not the mustard patch which damages the bees' honey. The bees decides to eat the mustard leaves. Here. Persons whose property would be damaged should distance themselves from the source of damage. Similarly, this applies to any invasion of privacy where halacha stipulates that a wall be erected. Um, basically, uh, like we mentioned before, if a colleague sees his neighbour causing him to- tolerable damage and does not protest, he loses his right to protest in the future because it is assumed that he forewent his right to the other party. Um, the above the, the the categories that I mentioned are uh, dust, toilet smell, shaking of the ground, and smoke um, are intolerable, and therefore the neighbour can protest whenever he chooses because it's assumed that he has not forgotten his right to the other party unless until a kinyan is made. There are also um, the the Vambam also mentioned subcategories of these exceptions which allow for future protests. These are damages which are of an ongoing nature. Uh, where it is claimed that one's neighbour did not protest the tolerable damage and thereby, for, for their, and thereby forwent his ability to protest in the future, and the neighbour disputes it, then it is the duty of the person who has been damaged to bring proof. If he cannot bring proof, the damager has to take a shvot chesed and he is free. And lastly, where it is claimed that a kinyan was carried out to allow activities which cause intolerable damage, the damager has to bring proof that a kinyan was made between them. If he cannot, then the neighbor must make a shvot chesed, and the damager then has to remove his damaging force. So we see that, um, that from the Mishnah Torah, there are certain instances where perhaps big industry or huge oil companies can be, you know, can be, um, can be, uh, looked at from a halakhic point of view and ruled on, ruled over and uh, you know perhaps be desisted to continue their activities if uh, the certain um, um, damages are affected mm-hmm. and so yeah that that, that was uh, there was a lot of um, a lot of laws pertaining from man to man that can be adapted to man in the environment and um, perhaps we can perhaps in the future there'll be rulings like this taken from uh, such things like the Mishnah Torah uh, relating to the environment because it seems like the environment is uh, is like an enlarged uh, you know man and his neighbor if you know that. oh yeah. yeah yeah well listen man has to coexist with his neighbor so man has to coexist with with the world that Hashem gave him we we, we are exactly we we we're all, we're in this together. So if you have one uh, party in the in the within the two party relationship that's abusing the other one, it's like it's like uh, uh, it's a dysfunctional relationship. So that that's why this is so so uh, important. Well, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, 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 we, that we mention this now. You know, because if there's a dysfunctional relationship, it needs therapy. So, yeah. what you're doing now, Michael, is you're 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 giving up, you're giving the therapy that we need yeah, exactly. to be able to handle the environment. In uh, yeah, like like I said, this translates to the global thing, it, like uh, to a global uh, scale. The number of threats to the environment has increased greatly as a result of the growth of large urban centres and the development of industry. Smoke, industrial waste, untreated sewage dumping sites in close proximity to residential areas, even damage to the ozone layer and various other ecological evils represent a real danger not only to the environment and to the quality of life, but to life itself. Um, that, that um, you know, today the danger to the environment is many, many times greater than at any other time in history. Perhaps increasing importance of Jewish values and the approach contained in these legal sources, the Mishnah Torah and other 
um, sources uh, maybe this is the proper course to be followed and um, and as a result man perhaps will not forfeit his opportunity to live a life of comfort in his environment nor will the environment be uncomfortable with man wow okay so there's a lot we have to do but you know what like you said michael the work starts with us and the work starts now so thank you so much michael my pleasure looking forward next week um c can you give us a hint to, to what we're talking next week uh, even just a hint uh, we'll be talking about um in part about noah and the flood and mm. um and uh, perhaps about trees so wow tune in. yeah fantastic thank you so much so that wraps it up for this week uh have a wonderful and blessed week and we'll see you then take care